Intro song. Let's test a Magnus Effect flyer. For this build, you'll need something to plan with, something to measure with, some cups. I was lucky and had a range of disposable cups at the lab, but you might be able to use cardboard that was rolled up into the shape. Need some cell tape or glue. You can use both to fix it together. Any kind of glue will do. I had hot glue, it's fast and easy. And some rubber bands for launching. This couldn't be much easier. You just stick two cups together, bottom to bottom. I used hot glue and then taped around the edge as well because I found sometimes the rubber band would get caught in the gap between if there wasn't some tape over. I don't know if it needs the glue, just tape will probably be fine. Chain together some rubber bands. I tried to find ones that were the same size because I thought I could use those as a variable. Uh, for instance, I could use how many rubber bands are wrapped around the cup that might affect the spin. This would be really handy if you only had access to materials to make a single flyer. That way you can choose a different variable like how many rubber bands or you could add and subtract weight from the flyer with extra tape or blue tack just to try to test something. A well-planned experiment provides better quality data. I decided that I would measure how far the flyer flew, and that was my dependent variable. My independent variables were how heavy the cup was, its mass, and the diameter of the cup mouth. That gave me an approximation of the size of the object. Um, the rest of the variables I tried to keep similar. How much of the rubber band I slung around it, how far I stretched it, where I was standing obviously. These things are difficult to control for but that's one of the main goals is to try to reduce all those extra confounding variables. It's a good idea to test your apparatus so I thought I'd try my flyers out. It's very easy to set up, just wrap the rubber band chain around. Once you've gone over the end it'll stay on there. Leave a couple out at the end to pull back, and when you let it go, it should throw the flyer forward and spin it at the same time. The combination of its forward motion and the spin are what give it the lift, and you can see it jumps up in the air and then glides down to the ground. It can take a little practice to get the timing of the launch down, but once you've done it a few times, you should be able to consistently get your flyer up in the air and cruising back down. This is the setup I would use for an actual experiment. What I'm doing is wrapping the rubber bands around the cup and then leaving a certain number at the end. I chose two. Then I can hold that out over the end of the table and pull the cups back, let them go, and that will launch very consistently. This way I'm not adding extra variables by standing in a different spot, by moving my arm a different amount each time as I throw the cups forward. It just makes my data better quality because I'm not throwing as much random confusion into the mix. Whee! We can test the Magnus effect with some paper tubes. This one requires very simple equipment, just some paper, some tape, something to measure with, and something to cut the paper. That's all you need for the flyers. Then you need a ramp to launch them off. I used a chopping board, you could use any plank of wood or a big book, just something to roll them down so that they have some spin when they go off the edge of the table. The construction is very simple, just tape one edge and then Roll it into a tube as evenly as you can, leaving just a little bit of overlap at the end. I use different sizes of paper or different proportions of that one piece of paper to give me different size tubes. You could have them gradually reduce in size by two centimeters, say, or whatever you want to do. 
to have different size tubes to use as a variable. Since I was planning to film this from the side, I thought I'd make a strip of paper with some measurements marked out so it would be easy to see in the footage where the tube had fallen. So I just marked it in two centimeter increments and then over the top of that marked 10 centimeter sections. I think this was actually longer than it needed to be. You could use a much shorter strip. As always, good plans are likely to get better results. So for my dependent variable, I'm going to measure how far away the tube lands from a vertical drop off the edge of the table. Then my independent variable will be the size of the tubes. I set my ramp up so that it's got an angle to it and drops right off the end of the table. This way, when the tube leaves the end of the ramp, it'll be spinning. And that spin will cause the Magnus effect. Here's my setup from the side. You can see I've got my ramp set up, the measuring strip underneath, and I've put my camera where I can film from the side so that I can see where it lands when I review the footage. It's actually pretty cool how much it curves in the air. This happens because the spinning object displaces air particles and that causes areas of turbulence and areas of high and low pressure which imparts a force on the falling object, the paper tube. I noticed that you can also just throw them and spin them with your hands as you launch them in the air and that will affect their path as well. You could potentially use that as a way to test the different sizes or different amounts of spin that you apply. It's just a little bit difficult to measure. So there you go. Two options for experiments to test the Magnus effect. Remember to plan it out, get your results and share them online. Thank you very much. Happy experimenting.